look today at, at uh, a very interesting passage of scripture. The theologians call it the feeding of the 5,000. You know that there were more than 5,000 people there because if you studied out good Bible students know that there were 5,000 men, yes. right? Yes. So there were women and children and you know there's usually more women than children so I personally believe it was like 12,000 people there. That's just my, you know why I believe that? Because when you study this out each of the disciples or each of the apostles had a basket and how many disciples were there? There were 12. See, I believe there were 12,000 people there, but that's that's my interpretation. Okay, so here we go. So, it, it, there were, it's called the feeding of the 5,000. Now, here's something you may not know. I was interested, surprised, I was surprised when I found this out. This is the only miracle that is depicted in each of the four Gospels. This is the only, there's a lot of miracles. You know, Jesus walked on water, Jesus raised people from the dead. But this one is the only one that's in all Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Somebody said, I just learned something. How's the temperature? Is anybody too hot? Y'all all right? Yeah. I just must be working hard. It's hot to me. Yeah. Y'all can maybe bring it down a little bit. But anyway, here we go. So, Matthew. Here we go. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. This is the feeding of the 5,000. This is the perhaps the most prominent miracle that Jesus did because it's in all of the, of the four accounts of the gospel. Matthew 14 and verse 13. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to read this whole thing together. All right? Y'all ready to do some reading? Yeah. Since y'all ain't been doing it, oh yeah, half of y'all been doing your Bible reading. A third of y'all been doing your Bible reading. A fifth of y'all been doing your Bible. Let's all do a Bible reading. Somebody say, help us out, Pastor. Here we go. When Jesus, we're reading together. When Jesus heard of it, John the Baptist is dead. He departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. Somebody say desert place. And when the people had heard thereof, read with me, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Next slide, please. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place. And time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some victuals. In other words, buy themselves some groceries, some food. All right? Verse 16. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. In other words, bring, bring the five loaves and the two fishes to me. Next verse. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Amen? Amen. Verse number 20. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. Last verse. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. All right. Now we get down to the get down. The thing I want to say before I get into this is this is the end of the year. This is the last sermon I'm going to preach uh, on a Sunday uh, before this year's out. And I thought about this and I said, what would I like to give to the church? And here's what I want to give to you. I want to give you knowledge. I want you all to know something going into 2015. And I want you to know it for yourself. How many of you all have ever heard that saying? Uh, I heard it when I was growing up. I'm sure a lot of you did. If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man how to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. Guess what? My Christmas present to you today is I want to teach you how to fish. I don't want to... We can come
come up here, I could give everybody. I mean, we gave some nice little gifts away, calendars and stuff. That ain't gonna do. That's okay. But I want to teach you how to fish. And if you get this, you can give thanks to God, and you can be thankful to me for a lifetime. Because if you get what I'm gonna tell you today, it's gonna it's gonna change your life. Somebody say, change me. Change me. Now, did you notice that when the verse of scripture began? It said that the disciples were hungry. Jesus had led them out there, and they said it was a, what kind of place? Desert. They said it was a desert place, right? And verse 15, look at verse 15. It says, and when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is past. Send this crowd away so that they may go into the village and get themselves something to eat. Somebody say death and life, yes. death life. are in, in the power of the tongue. They, the disciples, said with their mouths, this is a desert place. They said, ain't nothing here. Ain't nothing happening, as we used to say in the 70s. Ain't nothing happening here. You know, what's happening, man? Ain't nothing happening. They said with their mouths, this is a desert place. I'm here to tell you we can fall into the same trap. Uh -huh. In life, you're going to be in some places and situations that factually you can say, this is a desert place. When we first walked in this place in here, it was easy for you to say, this is a desert place. This is a warehouse. Ain't nothing happening up in here. So, so, something, something happened uh, this week. I, I, it was such a blessing to me. I always try to see God in everything, really, to be honest with you. I always try to see the spiritual aspect of everything. So we were going Christmas shopping. And, uh, you know, I had prayed the daily prayer. So I knew that I was going to be led by the Spirit. So we were getting ready to go shopping. We were getting ready to go to one store. And the Lord told me, spoke my heart, we're in the car. And God said, D don't go to that store. Go, go back to Carson. He said, I, I need you to go shop close to the church because you need to run into some people that, you know, you can tell about the kingdom and about your church. So I told my wife this, and then we said, okay, we're going to make a turn around, and we're going to go to, to the Rouse and Carson. So we went to the Rouse and Carson. Not long after we got there, sure enough, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we ran into people, you know, people that either knew us or people that we just met. But something very interesting happened. There were three people that we ran into, and, and, and God used my wife. She, she was saying to people, um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and it's going to be, it was like she just said the same thing to everybody, and it's going to be a blessed 2015. That's what she said. And the first person that she said that to said, uh, I hope so. <laughs> then she, we ran into somebody else. And she kind of said the same thing. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Here's a track. She gave, we gave the tracks out. And it's going to be a blessed 2015. And the second person said, I hope so. And then the third person that we ran into, she said, Merry Christmas and blessed New Year. And it's going to be a blessed 2015. And the third person said, I know that's right. In the name of Jesus, it's going to be a blessed 2015. Amen. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, did you see that, Pastor? He said, those were the three types of faith right there. He said, the first person did not did you know there's verbal and nonverbal communication, yeah. right? Yeah. Their nonverbal communication was such that their face was like, they were defeated. Yeah. And they said, when they said the word hope was in there, they both used, all three used the word hope. The hope was in there, but there wasn't no hope in that hope. They said, I don't hope so. And in fact, now that I think about it, right after that, they said, because 2014 is all over. <laughs> I want you to know something. 
And I want you to hear me. And I'm not saying this in a braggadocio way. I'm trying to tell you something because God is trying to help you to glean something from me. 2014 was the most prosperous and blessed year I've ever lived in my life. Amen. Amen. I've never experienced the great grace of God like I have this year. Amen. And yet, I know a lot of people like that first person that says, oh. And that experience that they had caused them to even look at 2015 and say, Amen. I hope so. Like 2014. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And, and the other thing the Lord showed me, he, he said, all these people were church people. It's important for you to be in church. It's also important for you to be under the right teaching. Because if you're not hearing the right thing, you're going to walk in what you've been taught. Amen. And what I'm trying to teach you is you're going to walk where you talk. You, you, you are going to walk where you talk. That first person, well, I hope so. They didn't give anything to God to work with. It wasn't faith. The other person said, yeah, I hope so. They were a little more excited. They were a little more added. But it wasn't faith because Hebrews 11 and 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I hope you remember the teaching earlier this year. It literally translates like this, and you can study it out. It means faith is being sure. Yeah. Study it out if you don't believe it. Read it. It says, faith. I'm talking Hebrews 11 and 1. It translates in the English from the Greek. Faith is being sure of what you're hoping for. Question, are you sure? Faith is being certain of what you cannot see. See, the first person, they were just totally in doubt. The second person said, well, I hope so. They were a little more animate. They were a little more excited. But it wasn't a statement of surety. It wasn't a statement of certainty. The, next, the last person, they said, amen. It, they, they proclaimed. Y'all yes. not hearing me today. They said, oh, in the name of Jesus, right. it's going to be blessed and highly made. And yes, in, the name, they, in other words, they, are, they agreed as touching yes. with the reverend that it was going to be. The question is, which one of those three people are you? Amen. Are you the, yeah, 2014 was yeah. good. I don't know about, I don't know, but she said, I don't know about 2015. I don't know, I hope so. Are you going to, yeah, I, I really hope so. You're excited, you, 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 you like, you, you, you pleading, but you're not proclaiming. The third person said, oh yes, in the name of Jesus, it shall be. I'm confident, I'm sure, I'm certain. Why? Because God, because the plans that God has for me are good. They are plans of peace. They are plans of prosperity. And guess what? If he said it, I'm just going to say it too. And that's going to be. Listen, it, and it shall be. But if you don't say it with him, without faith. See, you got to get that. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm going to trade like this. You get it. Without faith, it is impossible for God to bless you. Amen. No, you didn't hear me on that. I said without faith, it's impossible. You tied God's hands. You said, well, Pastor, that sounds really uh, theologically unscriptural. No, then read Hebrews chapter 11. Everybody in that hall of faith, they all took God in his word and they obeyed. What did, what did the three Hebrew boys do? They stood there in that fire front. What did Daniel do? He went down there in that lion's den. But they all said, listen, our God is going to do this. We, we believe that God is our Savior. And listen, we're not worried about it at all. But one thing we're not going to do, we're not going to bow to Baal. We're not going to bow to the world. We're not going to conform to the world. And our God shall be deliverer us today. Amen? Amen. They spoke it. And I'm trying to tell you, if you don't speak what God is saying, it's hard for God to bless you because he can't go against his law. And his law is the spiritual law called faith. Amen. So here we go for the rest of the way. Point number one for today. 
I had to give you that example because that example was so important for me this week. Point number one for today is Jesus got some seed. Point number one for today, Jesus got some seed. Somebody say, get some seed. Get some seed. Somebody else say, get some, seed. get some seed. Turn to your neighbor and say, get some seed. Get some seed. Point number one for today, Jesus got some seed. In other words, what, what is it that God wants us to know going into 2015? He wants you to... Uh, he wants you to determine what do you have to give. That's what he's asking. He's asking, what do you have to give? To, okay, because remember, they said, somebody say they. they. They said it was a desert place. In other words, what they said was, we ain't got nothing. And how many of us go around there, oh, we ain't got nothing. It's like my message last Sunday. The fact is, we ain't got nothing. Somebody say, but. but. Yeah, you better put a but behind it. Don't put a period where God put a comma. Okay. They didn't in the natural have anything. Somebody say, but. but. Whatever I have, bring it to Jesus. You Did you hear that prophetic word yes, this morning? Yes. Did you hear that prophetic word yes. this morning? Yes. The, I just met these people. Now I know why I like them. Yes. They just, they, they prophesied over us. They said this. Yes. In fact, they said there's somebody, and you really heard what they said. They said there's somebody hiding in the pew. That's what they said. They said people are sitting in the pew and God is calling them to just go come on up here and sow their seed. Because until you sow your seed, you're not going to get your harvest. Jesus said, get some seed, y'all. Stop talking about this is a desert place and go on and sow some seed. Boy, I, that, that, I hope that's something. Stop talking about what isn't and start sowing what is. Amen. They said, well, I don't have a whole lot. Don't worry about what, what whole lot you don't have. Sow what you do have. Amen. Stop worrying about what you don't have. Sow what you do have. Amen, somebody. Amen. He asked his disciples to get some seed. He knew, listen to this, he knew seed needed to be planted. Now, if Jesus knew seed needed to be planted, what about you? If he had to plant some seed, you got to plant some seed. Amen? Look at this, verse 16. Jesus said unto them, they not need to part. In other words, don't nobody need to go nowhere? We don't need to relocate. He said, watch this. He said, give them to eat. In other words, he told the disciples, y'all, you can feed them. You got to get this. He said, give them to eat. Jesus is telling them, I know it's called the feeding of the 5,000. I know it's one of Jesus' greatest miracles, but really, if you read it closely, Jesus said to the disciples or to the apostles, you feed them. Yes. Jesus could have fed them. Jesus could have done this. He said, I need not to give the people some fish. I need to teach y'all how to fish. I need to not do a miracle. I need you to sow some seeds so that you can see that God will work a miracle. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I need you to understand way after I'm gone that, that you can't be crying about, oh, if Jesus was here, we could have a miracle. No, Jesus showed us before he left how to sow and how to reap. Amen? Yeah. Jesus wanted to make sure before I leave, I need you all to learn how to sow. Yeah. And if we, listen, there's two things we're going to have to do in 2015. We're going to have to sow and we're going to have to speak. We're going to have to sow in faith and we're going to have to speak faith. Yeah. Somebody say, sow in faith, sow in faith. speak in faith. Speak in faith. That's what we're going to have to do. We've got to do both of them. We're going we're gonna to have to be proclaiming that God has supplied all of our need. And, but if you do that and you don't sow, you won't receive. And then if you do sow, but you don't speak faith, you won't receive. you got to do both. Somebody say both. I'm telling you, you're going to have to plant that seed and you're going to have to speak over that seed and say, God, I believe I receive in the name of Jesus and watch God bring the harvest. Somebody give him praise. Amen.